Please, he turns to Twitter and he lashes out, and any sense of unity or healing is put aside. And at least some of these tweets took place, by the way, on the way between the two sites. So he visited victims in one place while he was in the air on Air Force One. He starts tweeting about Joe Biden. We'll hear from Joe Biden. He made a speech yesterday uh, in the vein of what John Meacham was talking about, more of a conciliatory healing speech. Um, the president can't help himself. You would think perhaps if there were a day where he could help himself, yesterday might have been it. I just can't imagine having met with victims who survived right. a traumatic mass shooting and seeing these victims recovering in a hospital and then the first thing that you start to do is lash out at the media, lash out at political opposition and remove yourself from the sanctity of witnessing and grieving this incredible loss. It is just unimaginable to me how broken you have to be as a human being that this is your first response heading to El Paso where such a massacre just occurred. And the Hispanic community in particular feels like they have a target on their back because they did in that El Paso Walmart. And if you read the manifesto, if you read that first paragraph, it is absolutely chilling. And Donald Trump is completely incapable of doing anything that's not about himself. We know that. We should just accept it. But I think this is a moment that we're looking to other leaders to lead. And so good for Joe Biden with his speech yesterday. Good for Beto O'Rourke. Good for Cory Booker with his amazing speech. I hope that other leaders can fill the gap because we certainly aren't seeing it from Donald Trump and we aren't seeing it from any Republicans who remain incapable of condemning the president's racism and extremism. Shannon, extremism. you wrote, you covered yesterday, you wrote an account of it that reads, Trump turns a day of 